Here we are again for another video on timecode. Last time we were just talking about the process that I went through to land on the DDTC1 system. This time we're gonna be talking about how I implement it into my workflow using mirrorless cameras, using cinema cameras, using the Atomos Ninja 5 as an external recorder to making sure that everything syncs up in post and I have an easy time editing. Thanks for watching. As usual, everything's chapter marked down below so you can navigate quickly. Let's get to it. So now I wanna talk about how I implement the TC1s into my system. You can find tons of videos on all of the, the major technical details of the TC1s, but really there's so many different ways that you can implement a TC1 or any timecode system into various different mirrorless or professional cinema cameras or external recorders that I would just love to take a minute to talk about how I implement it into my system. So I have three TC1 units. I typically have one each on my A and my B cameras. The third one is reserved for the C camera or generally it lives on the Zoom F6. I tend to run the TC1s straight into the Ninja 5 and not through the mic in on the camera body. And that gives me two main benefits. The first one is that that allows me to run the TC1 at a line level signal and L as LTC timecode. The main reason for that is if you're running audio timecode on the TC1s, what it's doing is on one channel, it's sending the timecode signal and on the other channel, it's using the omnidirectional microphone built into the TC1 to send scratch audio on the other channel. And the problem with that is, is that if you're around really percussive sounds, that that scratch audio can bleed into the timecode signal and distort the timecode signal. So if you're frequently recording around loud sounds like at say like a concert or a rodeo or even me talking this close to the TC1, you can actually start to see the timecode signal fluctuate and that can impact the timecode and that's no good. So I've had issues working in loud environments where it's distorted the timecode signal enough where the timecode's been off and actually unusable and I've had to use a scratch audio to sync. And for me, that was getting really annoying. So I decided to just run LTC timecode at line level, skip the scratch audio from the TC1 and just go straight into the Ninja 5. The other benefit that gives like I mentioned earlier, the microphone on the TC1 is terrible. It will work for scratch audio, but it won't actually work if you wanted to use it for ambience. And it may seem a little silly that I'm saying I want to use like camera scratch audio for ambience, but that happens with me fairly frequently. Like if I'm not running a boom on something and I just have my talent on a lav and I have the camera is recording stereo scratch audio, the audio from the camera tends to be usable. Like the body is dense enough and everything's isolated enough that the sound coming into the microphones on the camera tends to be fairly usable. And so occasionally I will use that as ambience to put underneath the lav so that I just have some more, some more texture and some more color to what's happening. I was not able to do that with the scratch out off the TC1. It was very nasally, very boxy, and even with quite a bit of EQ, it was basically unusable. So that was the big thing for me. So now running into the Ninja 5, I have two channels of audio left and a right from the camera, and then two more channels. One is empty, one is a line level LTC signal from the TC1. So to use the TC1 into the Ninja 5, it's a fairly easy setup. The TC1s have this Velcro bottom. They come with a little cold shoe mount. You can pull that off and there's a Velcro bottom. I put some Velcro sticky on the top of the Ninja 5 stick the DDTC one there, and then the top input jack on just underneath the power button on the Ninja 5 is where you can run a mic or a line in. So on the Ninja 5, if you press the little audio meters at the top right, bring you up into the meters area, just to the right of meters in the top menu, you can press audio, and that will bring you to the interface that lets you control what's coming into the mic or the line jack here. The bottom left, you can select the audio level to be either line level, minus 10 dBU, or mic level, minus 40 dBU. If you have the TC1 set to LTC, you wanna make sure that you are at line level. And I have my gain on the left channel, which is the channel that the LTC signal is coming in on, at minus 12 dB. And that sets the audio coming in from the TC1 at between minus 20 and minus 12 dB, which is perfect. I haven't had any issues with that distorting the signal DaVinci's been able to read it every single time. 
Once you have this set up, there's two more things you need to do before everything is working properly. The first one is you need to set your audio delay. There's a couple different ways you can do that. You can do trial and error by just adding and subtracting frames until you get everything synced up properly. The best way I found to do it is if you have your line level signal running into the Ninja 5, you can take your TC1, hold it in front of the camera, record, and then see how many frames are off. You can also sync up your audio, tap in front of the camera and sync your audio from a microphone into an external recorder and the audio that was recorded is scratched from the camera body. See how that all syncs up in post. There's multiple different ways to do it. On the Z6 II with the current firmware, it's about seven frames off. The second thing you need to do, and this is super important to make sure that the Ninja 5 will actually record the timecode signal that's coming in, is you need to go back into meters and on the far left under analog, you need to make sure that LREC or left rec is highlighted in red. You can undo right rec if you want. That's just gonna be a dead track since you are just running LTC, that's an empty track. And you also need to make sure that channels one and two are also recording that scratch audio that should be coming in from your camera. If you don't see those meters coming up, make sure that your camera is actually sending audio into the Ninja 5. So, so once you've run through those steps, you should be good to go on running timecode into the Ninja 5. One thing to remember is if you put the Ninja 5 on a different camera, you may need to check the frame delay, you may have a slightly different frame delay from camera to camera. So I found it to be the same between my two Nikons, but if you throw it on a Canon or a Sony or something, you may encounter a different frame delay, something to consider. So that's really all for setting up the camera system. Like I said, one of the things I love about the LCD screen is if I want to take the Ninja off and I do want to run straight into the camera, it's really easy for me to just on the LCD screen here, switch from that LTC line level timecode down to audio timecode straight on the device without having to go into the app or alter anything. It's really, really enjoy having the LCD screen. Last piece to talk about as far as getting timecode for a full system on set is working with my audio recorder. So if I only have two cameras and I'm not running a third camera, I generally just leave a timecode box and mount it on the Zoom F6. Zoom X6 has a dedicated timecode IO port. Those generally take timecode at a line level signal or LTC. So you wanna make sure that it's set to LTC. Going into the timecode port on the Zoom F6, it is on the right side if you're facing the unit. If I am running three cameras, I can just jam sync the F6 to the TC1 and then remove the timecode box and put that on the C camera. The F6 has a temperature compensated crystal oscillator clock, just like the TC1s do, so it has a highly accurate clock. I've jam synced the F6 at the beginning of the day and it's been same exact frame at the end of the day. So I trust the F6 that I don't have to have a device on it, but I just, I do if I have the extra device, but it's nice having that peace of mind knowing that if I am running three cameras, I know that all four devices are gonna stay in sync throughout the day. I will take a quick second to talk about the Deity TC SL1, Deity's Smart Slate. I got to use it a couple weeks ago on a network TV shoot. Absolutely loved it. It was a very simple, very easy to use Smart Slate. It was my first time using a Smart Slate, so I was a little intimidated with how the system works, but it was incredibly simple. It felt just like setting up the TC1s. The interface is actually exactly the same. It looks like you have a little TC1 embedded in the back of the Smart Slate. Setting everything up was an absolute breeze. It connects to the app just like all the TC1s do, so you can set everything up in the app, which is where you're gonna add any extra fields that you want to show up after the clapper. Very easy to use, especially for me, I am terrible at using slates. Like using slates with one hand, I look like an absolute doofus on set when I use slates. And the TC1 was super easy to use with one hand. It's got a huge groove in the back for your hand and for your thumb to clap. Even if you're tail slating and flipping the slate upside down, very easy. There's even a dedicated switch on the side of the TCSL1 so that you can invert the time code so that the slate is inverted, but the time code will show up properly. It was a very easy slate to use. Besides how easy it was to use, one of the things I really loved about the TCSL1 was its ability to be compatible with other timecode systems, be it you had the UltraSync system or a Tentacle system or an Ambient system, whatever. It could take a timecode in and jam sync 
from really any system. It has a five pin limo in and it comes with the five pin limo cable so you can jam it to anything and it still has that same temperature compensated crystal oscillator that the TC1s have so you know it's gonna stay sync with the rest of your devices throughout the shoot day. It's got an incredibly long battery life, longer than the TC1s. I think it was like 35 hours with the slate open and the backlight running. So incredible battery life, very easy to use. I'm not in the market for a smart slate. I wish I was because using the TCS-01 was just a really fun experience overall. And I was really impressed with how, obviously we only used it for a day. We rented it from Lens Rentals. I love Lens Rentals. I don't know how many times it would have been rented out, but the thing had, you could tell it had been used, but you could tell that it, it functioned perfectly fine and it didn't look like it had been overly beaten up. So really love that system. If I do need a smart slate, I will absolutely be investing in the TCS L1. So that's really how I set up all my timecode system. As far as post-production goes, it's super easy. All of the timecode into the Ninja 5s is recorded into an audio track. DaVinci has a built-in feature where you can update the metadata timecode from the audio track. That has worked flawlessly. I've used it on tons of files. We just got back from Africa and I synced over 500 files in less than a minute by updating the timecode from the audio track. So it works flawlessly. Of course, if you're using a device like an F6 or a RED or something that has a dedicated timecode IO port, you're writing timecode straight into the metadata and you're not having to worry about updating from an audio track later. So in post, it's been an absolute breeze. We are able to sync up all the files from our trip to Africa. Whenever I do client work, it's just, it's, it's a no brainer. Setting up my project in DaVinci is just so much faster now, now that everything just instantly syncs with timecode. It's been a really big game changer. And really, I would say that's what makes these timecode devices so worth it. I mean, $550 is not pocket change to most people. I mean, if you're doing this professionally, that, that can seem like kind of a low number, but $550 is saving you an incredible amount of time throughout your post-production workflow. Just think of, if you're not using timecode right now, think of how much time you spend syncing multicam clips. It can take forever. I remember the first time I sank a multicam and everything was off. It, it I spent like two hours making sure that all my different audio clips and all my different cameras were synced. It was a nightmare. That would happen instantly now. And so timecode, saves you so much time in the long run. So I hope you found this video helpful, whether you're using a mirrorless camera, external recorders, a cinema camera. I hope this kind of answered some questions on how to implement timecode into your system and just make the editing process that much smoother. If you got any more questions, leave them down in the comments below. We'll leave it up to a future video to talk really about what is timecode, what is genlock, word clock, how do all these things work, and why are they so important? So thanks for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to see future videos and we'll see you there.